Hi, this is Kate and Kadar from DNA 2.0. We are two scientists at DNA 2.0 that help develop the current products and services we offer for CRISPR-Cas9 technology. In this brief 10-minute overview, we'll provide an overview of CRISPR-Cas9 technology and its applications, the CRISPR products and services currently available for different host systems, an overview of our DNA 2.0 guide RNA design tool, and information on our technologies developed to minimize off-target effects. At the end, we'll go over a new emerging application called Guide RNA Libraries. CRISPR-Cas9 is quickly emerging as a popular application for genome editing. It's replacing zinc finger nucleases and talons because of its ease and effectiveness. CRISPR-Cas9 can be used for knock in or knock in, knock, knock in or knock out of your particular gene or region in a genome. It works by using a U6 promoter to drive the guide RNA scaffold. This, is, this scaffold consists of a 20 base pair region attached to another region that provides the scaffold region you see in the blue area of this icon. In the next part of the vector, there is a promoter driving the expression of the Cas9 protein, or Nicase mutant of Cas9. We offer a variety of promoters for different host systems to help control the expression of the Cas9 protein. This guide RNA sequence is called the guide RNA because it drives the, the Cas9 protein to the particular region of the genome you would like to edit via a 20 base pair target region. This guide RNA targets the Cas9 to the region. At the end of the region, there is a 3 base pair PAM, coder spacer adjacent mode. In order to accomplish genome editing, um, what makes CRISPR-Cas9 convenient is that it puts a double-stranded break in the, the, the region of interest. So when you have a double-stranded break, it can be fixed in a variety of ways, one of them being non-homologous end joining, wherein the DNA strands are simply joined together, creating often creating indels, insertions or deletions in the sequence of one, one or two bases. This results in a frame shift mutation, which is convenient for knocking out genes. Another way to repair a double-stranded break is to supply a cassette, whether it's a short cassette with oligonucleotides uh, or a larger cassette containing a different gene or a region of a gene, which helps with creating gene replacements or also creating precise point mutations. Um, what DNA 2.0 offers is convenience in a simple all-in-one vector design where both the guide RNA and the Cas9 protein are expressed of the same plasmid. So if you have a target of interest, that 20 base pair sequence is cloned into this vector using our convenient electron cloning system and the rest of the components are already on the plasmid. Some of these components I'll go over quickly. Uh, one of them is we have a choice of promoters to drive Cas9. Um, the Cas9 protein is driven in this example here I show on the right there's a graph with three different bars. These are three different promoters, the CMP promoter, the CAG promoter, and the CBH. Uh, these are have varying strengths. You can see the CMP is a strong promoter. On the y-axis is the indel frequency, which is basically a measure of cutting at, at a given site. And the frequency at which the repair happens, resulting in a mutation. The mutation is typically an insertion or deletion, so we report that uh, here in, in indel frequency. Using a stronger promoter to drive Cas9, we see higher indel frequencies, presumably because more Cas9 protein was made, and using weaker promoters results in lower indel frequencies. What this means is that by means of controlling the uh, Cas9 protein expression, you can also control indel frequency at your site of interest, but also any potential off-target effects that may occur. We'll get into off-target effects more in a minute. Another convenient feature we have is we have fusions with the 2A splice site for fluorescent proteins. DNA 2.0 has developed some uh, IP-free fluorescent proteins. Here we offer fusions with the green and the red, 
which means they're compatible with each other. So you can have two different plasmids if you desire in the same strain and monitor expression of Cas9 in that host. So again, with the two different promoters, one can control the trade-off between on-target activity and efficiency versus off-target activity and unintended consequences. So here is another graph showing a comparison of the indel frequencies using four different chide RNAs and we show that for each of these different targets our results with the NE2.0's vector or in one vector shown in the red bar was pretty comparable with published results uh, in the literature with these same chide RNA sequences. So our vectors have been comprehensively validated for uh, their intended function. Uh, one concern that has cropped up with Cas9 is that Yes, you get on-target activity and efficiency, but there's also cutting at sites that are similar to the target sequence. So here I show a figure where there's a target sequence of 20 bases followed by a PAM, which is the three-base uh, sequence from, for in the case of the s pyogenes Cas9 protein. Here, the, uh, this is a paper from the Zhang lab um, and, and related colleagues. This is from the Sanger group where... Um, <clears throat> They systematically changed one base pair in the sequence for the target and show that there's significant cutting even when there's a one base mismatch for most of these. As you get closer to the PAM, you see a slightly lower efficiency of cutting, but you still see cutting. In fact, what was interesting was even having five base pair mutations still led to a little bit of cutting at that site, which means that sequences if you can target a sequence of 20 base pairs and there's another sequence anywhere in the genome that can be even as much as five base pairs apart, there will still be some off-target activity there, which is pretty dangerous. Uh, so this has turned to a growing concern. People have found many ways of addressing this. We at DNA 2.0 have worked out some uh, methods to also enable addressing of off-target activity. And Kate's about to go into those. One of the primary technologies we developed to address off-target effects is using the Nicase mutant of Cas9. The Nicase mutant protein was established in the Jane lab where they showed an estimated 50 to 1,000 fold lower off-target activity. The, re the reason for this is the way the system works. The Nicase mutant requires two guide RNAs, each guide RNA targeting the top or, or the bottom strand to NIC. The combination of the two guide RNAs is what makes this more efficient and is what reduces the off-target activity because you're less likely to find these, these, two double, these, these two 20 base pair sequences elsewhere in the genome. Currently, people are using the NICase protein in a two-vector system expressing each guide RNA in a different vector. DNA 2.0 has developed a Nicase Ninja, allowing you to express tandem guide RNAs in a single vector. And you can see here, in the top right graph, we, we see higher indel frequency, over 50%, compared to over 30% in the published two-vector system. We believe this is because our optimized vector, and because it is single vector rather than dealing with the hassle of a two vector system. We offer this vector with a variety of promoters. As we discussed in for the wild type Cas9, we also offer it with fluorescent protein fusions for monitoring it. So it's with our Dasher green fluorescent protein and our Paprika red fluorescent protein. Another tool we've developed to minimize off-target effects is the DNA 2.0 Guide RNA Design Tool. And this tool can be used to design guide RNAs for your wild-type Cas9 or the Nicase mutant Cas9. This tool is great because you get instant results, and we provide a lot of information. So after entering your gene or the region of interest, we will provide you instant results with your guide RNA sequences with a target specificity score. And we've developed this score using a proprietary algorithm that scans the genome for your 20 base pair sequence and the, the, the possibility of it occurring elsewhere. 
This target specificity score will help you identify the best guide RNAs for your target. You can, just, you can design your guide RNAs in this tool and directly order them in a vector in less than three minutes if you know what you're looking for. It's a fast and easy tool. Please watch our video on the guide RNA design tool for more details. We also offer CRISPR systems in other hosts. We've become the industry leader in creating CRISPR products and services for other hosts. We currently offer CRISPR in for yeast saccharomyces. We are developing we are developing Picia, the Bordetella system, plants, algae, and more. There's really no host system that we're afraid of working in. Please do not hesitate to contact us to help for help to develop CRISPR products and CRISPR technology in your particular host. Last but not least is a hot emerging new application called these guide RNA libraries. These are being used for large-scale functional screens. You can design, design these guide RNA libraries against all known genes of the species or for a particular subset of genes. We're currently designing guide RNA libraries that range from hundreds to tens of thousands. Let me provide a quick summary to close this out. Um, so DNA 2.0 has a range of products to help with genome editing, specifically around CRISPR-Cas9. We have a great uh, guide RNA design tool. This works both for the double cutter or wild type Cas9 as well as for the dual linkage strategy. Um, we also offer a lot of a variety of all-in-one plasmids for CRISPR-Cas9. Both these have either the Cas9 wild type or the Nikkeis with a variety of different promoters to handle the trade-off between on-target and off-target activity. We also have the ability to express multiple guide RNAs of a single plasmid if you want to target multiple loci from one plasmid or use this for the dual Nikkei strategy. We have working plasmids for mammalian and yeast and we are soon to release E. coli as well. We are developing several others on a one-on-one -on -one basis with customers. So if you have a specific host you're interested in, do not hesitate to contact us. We're also working on this new application around guide RNA libraries. We can design libraries of any size for targeting a variety of different genes in your host or any other application that you may have. For further information, do contact us at mammalian at dna20.com or sales at dna20.com. And thanks a lot for your attention.